video can be watched in conjunction with our series, Creating an Active Directory Domain Using Hyper-V, or independently. In this video, we're going to install Windows 10 Professional into a Hyper-V virtual machine and join it to our Active Directory domain. So we have our two domain controllers, we've configured Active Directory, we now need a couple client computers to connect. We're going to do our first client, which will be a Windows 10 professional client. I'm again going to bring up the new virtual machine wizard. This is the same wizard whether you're on Hyper-V on a server or Hyper-V on, say, Windows 10. So I'll go through the wizard, I'll choose next. I want to give this machine a name. I like to give it the computer name. So in this case, it'll be MIIM for the master it, master IT in minutes domain. This will be a virtual desktop and it'll be 0001 so that I can create up to 9,099 virtual desktops. That would be a huge network. This is going to be Windows 10 Pro. I like to put the OS in my name and choose next. I can use a generation two because it's Windows 10, so I'll choose next. I'm going to go ahead and allocate uh, 2048 meg or two gigs. I'm not going to use dynamic memory because again, I have more than ample memory. If you're doing this on a Windows 10 machine, two gigs, you know, if you have 16 gigs on the machine, great. If not, you might consider using dynamic memory so that it doesn't allocate two dedicated gigs. It'll just allocate whatever the machine needs. So you would find you'd be able to run more virtual machines using that dynamic memory. Although you'll need to go out to task manager out on your base OS and check how much memory is being used. So at this point, I'll connect to that virtual switch we talked about, choose next. There's my virtual hard drive. Again, I don't need this large. I'm going to just go 60 gigs. It doesn't create a static 60 gig file, so that it'll dynamically grow as we grow. Now, that would be different in a production environment where there's going to be some performance deviation compared to creating a static uh, 60 gig file. At this point, I need to go back out. I don't want Windows Server. I want Windows 10. There it is and I will double click that. That's going to be my ISO file. I choose next, make sure my configuration is what I want it to be and choose finish. It'll go ahead and create the virtual hard drive. As you can see, it did that pretty quickly. I'm going to connect to the machine and my media is connected. I'll just double check. There's my Windows 10 ISO and I'll start the machine. Now, as I quickly start the machine, I want to catch this right here. Make sure that I press any key to start booting from that virtual DVD that has the ISO file. At this point, it'll walk me through the installation. I'll choose next here. I want English. I want to install now. I'm going to need to give it a license key. So when that comes up, I'm going to pause the video, give it the key, and simply choose the next button so that I'm not sharing my private key with everyone out on YouTube. So hold on. As you can tell, my key was successfully accepted. I'll accept the license terms and choose next. I'm going to do a custom install here. There's my 60 gig virtual hard disk that was created during the uh, virtual machine wizard. I'll choose next. It'll go out and install the files. We'll watch it copy the files here real quick. There we go. And it'll get the files ready for installation. So I'm going to go ahead and pause while it does this and come back right before it says finishing up. So it's gone ahead, it's got the files ready for installation, it's installed, it's installing some quick updates that it has, it'll finish up, and then at this point it's going to go ahead and reboot the server so that it can con finish configuring the inf installation. Blah. I'm going to go ahead and say restart now, don't need to wait, and we'll let it restart. It'll go ahead and restart, get a few things ready as it shows here. So at this point, I just need to let it know that I'm going to go ahead and use the express settings. So I'll click that. This will take just a minute and we'll need to put in a username and password for our Windows 10 machine. Now, remember, I'm going to connect this to an Active Directory domain. So I don't want to use my Microsoft account that I'm used to using when logging into my personal machine. So I'll show you what we'll do instead as soon as this finishes.
just go ahead and be patient as it finishes the installation. It may go out, get critical updates, etc. Restart again before we put in our username and password. So here we are. I am going to join a local Active Directory domain. That's what we're creating this whole series for. So I'll choose that and next. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and give it a username. Now, not administrator, but I'm going to call this MIIM admin because in my Active Directory, I'm going to create an account for that. Now, this is going to be the local admin on this computer until we associate it with a domain. At this point, I'll put in a nice complex password. Now, because this is a lab environment, I've gone ahead and used what I'm going to say is my lab admin password. If this was a production environment, of course, I'd use something different. But just a reminder there, it is required that you put that in. I'll choose next. It'll go ahead and instantiate the MIIM admin user account on this virtual machine. So it'll do that. It'll come to the MIIM admin login screen. At this point, it goes ahead and logs me in automatically. Here you see because of my virtual switch, it sees a network. Do you want to allow your PC to be discoverable by other PCs and devices? I'm going to go ahead and say yes here because again, this is a lab environment. I'm in my PC. The next thing I'm going to do is come in. I'm going to do a Windows update here. Go out, grab the updates for this machine, and it'll be ready to go for our next series of labs. Take care. Now that I have my uh, Windows 10 Pro virtual client completely configured, I need to go back into the virtual machine settings. So as you can see, I've shut down the machine. I'm going to right click and go into settings. And you'll notice that on the network adapter, it is attached to the base machine, which means it's not going to communicate with my two virtual domain controllers. So consequently, what I need to do is add a network adapter, choose add. And I'll come up here and I will attach it to the MIIM private vSwitch. So basically, I'm going to give it a network adapter that it can use to communicate with my domain controllers because, of course, our next step is going to be authenticating that server. Now, I don't have a DHCP server up yet, so I'm going to apply. I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to go ahead and start up this machine. Without a DHCP server, what I'm going to have to do is give this machine a static IP in the same 172.16 range that my domain controllers are in. So I'm going to go ahead, pause while the machine starts up, and get to that screen. So at this point, logged in the machine, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to type in Ethernet because I want to mess with the Ethernet connections. So I'll say change Ethernet settings. I'm going to come down here to change adapters, and I'm going to see that new adapter right here. Now you right, might remember that one thing we did is rename this to MIIM private vSwitch so that I could remember which switch was part of the private network and which one connected out through the base server. So I'll also change this one as well. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to double click. I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to give it a static IPv4 address. So there's my IPv4. I'll go into properties. And I'm going to give it a 172.16.0.100. I'm going to start my clients with 100 with the 255. You might remember that the de default gateway is my first domain controller, 172.16.0.1. And also, that's going to be the DNS server. So 172.16.0.1. And then the other one, my other domain controller is 16.0.2. So now this is going to have an IP address. And if I do that, close this and close this, you'll notice that that box came up saying it's connected to the network. So the next thing, if you haven't already done it, is change the name of the computer. So if I come in here and just type computer name, view your PC name, I'm going to come in here and rename this PC. If you remember, I called it my MIIM, MIIM. DSK0001. I'll say next. It'll go ahead and change that name. I'm going to pause while it does that. I'm going to have to restart. Once it restarts, we're going to go in and join the domain. So I'll pause again. So now I'm going to go in 
and type in domain. It's going to ask me to connect to work or school, which I'm going to do. I'm going to choose connect. And once this comes up, I'll play. All right, so once typing in that connection, I'm going to come down here and say join a domain. I'm going to give it the domain name, which is corp.miim.com, and choose next. And if you notice, it wants an Active Directory domain. I'm going to just go ahead and use the default administrator password and its authentication to make this connection with Active Directory. So this might take a minute. Be patient. I'm going to go ahead and pause. It's going to go ahead and add an account. I'll just add the admin account, not that I'm going to use it. I'll make it an administrator. I'll choose Next. And then, of course, I need to restart my PC. So by restarting my PC, what I should see is now an Active Directory login prompt if I know it's connected. So let me go ahead and pause while it does that. So if you notice, it's going to log me in as the administrator of the Corp Active Directory. So I'll go ahead and do that. and it'll create an administrative account on there for me. So that's it. That's all we need to do. Take care.